me to set you like a knife You wanna die in these streets, I was blind, now I see Yeah, for some shit, some righteousness Hey, doc, I'm tryna get my life right Cut the skin out, treat me set you like a knife You wanna die in these streets, I was blind, now I see Yeah, for some shit, some righteousness Yeah, for some shit, some righteousness The physicians of righteousness. The physicians of righteousness. The physicians of righteousness. To run it. Okay. Uh, shalom everybody, uh, we are, you know, talking about the Passover, what needs to be done, uh, why it's important, uh, to do it, why it's important, we talked last week about the travel, why it's important to travel, maybe, you know, you know, once if you can make it out to the main pa Passover, and definitely be prepared to, uh, do some travel for the Passover, definitely try to prepare yourself, so we talked about that last week. We're going to talk about getting the leaven out of your house. Getting the leaven out of your house. Even the breadcrumbs that's in your toaster. Getting all that leaven out of your house. Wherever you can find it. Get it out. That's what we want to discuss today. All right. Let's start with the law. All right. We'll go to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. Let's start at verse 1, 5, 15. Exodus 12 and verse 15. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. Mm. So that's the point right there, right? The seventh day. I'm sorry, read that again. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. So the first day, right, of the Passover, the first before that sun go down, and you go down and eat that lamb, before that happens, you're supposed to get all the leaven out of your house. Get all the leaven out of your house. That's the command. Read that thing again. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. Mm -hmm. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So, it was a commandment that you had to get all the leaven at your house, and you're not supposed to eat leaven. No leavening agents for seven days. I remember the first Passover I went to, I was, uh, I think it was in Dallas. Somewhere. I went to Dallas, and I came back, I was all excited. I was like, yeah, keeping the Passover. And I was talking to some dude at work. And I think I was sitting in my car eating some uh, chicken nuggets from McDonald's. And he was like, you ain't supposed to be eating leaven, I thought. And I'm like, ain't no leaven, these chicken nuggets. <laughs> I looked up the ingredients, it was leaven all in them things. Damn, I thought I was doing it right. <laughs> Guess not. Jump over to Exodus chapter 13. Let's look at verse... Uh, Let's look at verse 6. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 6. Uh -huh. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, uh -huh. and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Uh -huh. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Mm. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. So in all your, in your dwelling places, ain't supposed to be no leaven in it. I ain't got to get all the leaven out your house. So, part of the Passover is getting all the leaven out of your house. If y'all didn't know, now you know. There's a scripture to give you the support to say this is what we got to do and why we got to do it. Get all the leaven out. Um, you want to get, you know, your, your ice cream if you got leaven in it, right? I like, uh, what's the Ben and Jerry's with the, uh, what's it called? But yeah, with the cookie and the brownie in it. I can't think what it's called, but it's so delicious. I can't eat none of that. You know what I'm saying? So, no leaven in your house. Get that, get all that stuff out. 
Keep going. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, say. Mm, that's an important part, right? You got to also remember to teach your kids that thing. We're getting 11 out. This is why we're getting 11 out. You know, you want to show them. Go ahead. This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me mm. when I came forth out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And it shall be for a sign unto thee. So getting 11 out of your house is a sign. Things have a double meaning. You know what I'm saying? Give me that one. Was it again, Joe? What? Job 11 and 6. That sound right. Yep. Perfect. Job 11 and 6. Job chapter 11 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, mm -hmm. that they are double to that which is. Mm -hmm. Know therefore that God exacted, exacted of thee less than thine iniquity deserved. So he said that what we see is double what we actually read. So where it's telling us to get the leaven out of our house, right, it's actually a double meaning. It's actually a double meaning. Right? Who can tell me what is the other side of getting that leaven out of our house? What's the other side of that thing? It's a double meaning. Get the sin out your house too. What does it say again? Clean the sin out your house. Get Clean the, the sin out. Clean the sin out. Exactly. Exactly. Get the sin out. Somebody else say something? Somebody else say something. Okay. All right. Perfect. So that leaven is also going into sin. All right. We said get the leaven out your house, even the breadcrumbs in your toaster, though. So why are we saying that? Even the breadcrumbs in your toast, we want to get that out. What's the, the meaning behind that? Anybody think of anything? Why we would say that? Well, you want us to do a, a thorough search of what we, uh, you know what I'm saying, make sure, we're talking about the CNN and the 11 together. Mm -hmm. Doing a thorough search. Right, right. What you got, show me? Uh, pretty much pretty back on what he said is, uh, the little, just like the little um, crumbs, the little sin that you have in, like in you can man manifest to be bigger. Mm -hmm. So you want to do like um, do diligence and uh, cleanse and everything out. Right, those little things can grow into something bigger. He has something. Go ahead, Yehuda. You had to go into what we was talking about earlier. Um, examine yourself. Examine yourself. Right. Examine yourself. Right. What you got? Go ahead. I'm going to give you all a hint, man. Because you said eating the crumbs in your toaster, right? Right. In your toaster. Can you typically see the inside of your toaster? Like it's dark in there, right? So think about that. The 11 bread that's hidden in the dark. Mm -hmm. That 11. Yep, that 11 is hidden. Give me that, give me that definition of 11, please, sir. Let's read the definition of leaven. Leaven. A substance, typically yeast, that is added to dough to make it ferment and rise. Mm -hmm. For definition two. A pervasive influence that modifies something or transforms it for the better. Ah, I like that one. I like that one. Read that one again. A pervasive influence. A pervas so pervasive means something that could be like, that could, uh, what's the word? Mm, pervasive. There's some persuade you. It's a persuasive influence. You know what I'm saying? So if you leave some of that, some of them breadcrumbs in the toaster, you know what I'm saying? Some of that secret sin in there, guess what? It could persuade you to go back into that sin. Read that again one time. A pervasive influence. A persuasive influence. Something that could influence you. Go ahead. That modifies something or transforms it for the better. Okay, well, we know that the sin ain't gonna pers gonna ain't gonna uh, transform you for the better. It's definitely gonna make things worse. Definitely gonna make things worse. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, before Christ really came on the scene, mm. who was that persuasive device in Jerusalem? Who were people really following? Uh, 
scribes and Pharisees. Exactly. So go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. You want to read 6 through 8. You just got to think. There's a lot of scribes and Pharisees up there. And a lot of people, they had really nothing to... Uh, it's uh, fine. My bad. You're fine. You can touch on it again. <laughs> No, keep on. Okay. So, uh, read 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, mm. neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So you gotta think about that. You got how much yeast does it take to make a whole loaf rise? Just a little bit. Just a little pinch. Just a dab and do you? A little pinch. So now when you're looking at that in a form of sin, mm -hmm. we're talking about those crumbs in the toaster. Mm -hmm. We always we pull out the bread, we shake out the toaster, but it's always a little bit of stuff left in there that we really have to dig deep into. To figure out what it is, I was going to some different Pharisees. Oh, keep on Pharisees. So let's uh, let's go to yeah, going back to the Pharisees. Luke uh, twelve. So the, the Pharisees they had influence, major influence on on the Israelites. But what was their issue? They knew the scriptures. What was their influence? So. Pretty much uh, hypocrites. They were hypocrites. They weren't doing what the scriptures were saying. Exactly. They expected others to do what the scriptures were saying. Exactly. Luke chapter 12 and verse 1. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trolled one upon another. There were so many people there. Go ahead. He began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees. Which is hypocrisy. Mm, so he's telling them to beware of this major influence amongst all these people that are there. Beware of these brothers. Go ahead. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, okay. So we're going to see who is he talking about? Going to be hid from who? There's nothing going to be hid. Judgment day. The judgment. So we're talking about the most high. He said, read that again. For there is nothing covered. So there's no sin that's 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 unseen. Go ahead. That shall not be revealed. Neither hid. That shall not be known. So that's talking about those little crumbs in the toaster. Those little crumbs that we that we we're trying to hang on to. Right, like we hide it. We're like we doing it in secret. Exactly. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the bread out. Right. And I'm good. Right. But you got all that residual sin that's still there. Go ahead and read that last one. Hit verse 2. Verse 3. Verse 3. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. So that little secret sin that you think that, that you're that you're you're covered in here in this little this little pocket over here, in this little pocket of this toaster, is going to be revealed. Go ahead. And that which ye have spoken in the air in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetop. So those little 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 Murmurings, those rumors, and, and that little backbiting stuff that you say in secret, it's gonna be like you might as well stand on the top of the Empire State Building and put up with a right. call, with megaphone, with a megaphone, right. and blast it to the whole world because it's gonna be known. Mm -hmm. oh, Go back to that uh, twelve and one. though I like that one a lot. Hear that one one more time. Luke chapter twelve and verse one. Uh -huh. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people. And so much that they trolled one upon another. He began to say unto his disciples, first of all, first of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees. This is what the leaven, when he's saying the leaven of the Pharisees, here it comes. Which is hypocrisy. Which is hypocrisy. See, that thing, man, we think it's hidden. A lot of times we think our stuff is hidden, and then we want to come in here and tell brothers where they messing up or tell sisters where they messing up, but yet. We hiding stuff. That's hypocrisy. Hmm. Go back. Go to James. Go to James. 
I just like that scripture. That leaven could go into hypocrisy. Give me James chapter 1. And let's start at verse 14. James chapter 1 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So, like we was reading, the definition of leaven was, was a persuasiveness. Right? That's an enticing. Read that thing again. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust uh -huh. and enticed. So he's been persuaded. And when lust have conceived, mm -hmm. it bringeth forth sin. Man, when you when you allow that persuasiveness to 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 be left around you, it'll grow into something else. It'll grow into sin, which is going to lead into what? Keep going. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. That's what it's going to lead to. It's going to lead to when you come back. When I'm sorry, when Christ come back, and you standing before His judgment seat, He's going to say curtains for you. You know what I'm saying? Cause you thought you was hiding the sin. You thought you was you was hiding it. Crafty. Yeah. You being crafty. Being crafty. Cause you secret stuff going on. Man. Yeah, she used to look nice. All right. Um. I got one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Romans 13, wait, hold on. Hold on. Go to Romans 13 and 14. Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, so put, so put that on. Everybody's going to be going with their, with their fresh garments and all of that. We want to be able to put on what, what the spirit that the Most High wants us to put in, in in this word. Read. And make not provision for the flesh. And make not provisions for the flesh. That's how we end up. With you go into the Passover. You go in here and there. You go into the tabernacles. Wherever you're going. And you still got that provision. That sin still there. That old phone number in your phone. You see what I'm saying? You got that. You got that uh, Instagram still up. You see what I'm saying? We got to make sure that we get all that stuff out. Like Officer said, or then it's gonna come. You leave those provisions, they gonna come back to you. Let's go back. Go back to the law. Go back to Exodus 12 again. 12 and 15. Set the reset. Set the reset. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 15. Uh -huh. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. So, like we just read in Job 11 6, it's a double meaning. We just read that that double meaning of that leaven is also going into hypocrisy. Right? It's going into hypocrisy. Let's look at another aspect of sin. Sins that we think are in secret. The breadcrumbs and the toasters, per se. So we're up chapter 23 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Two sorts of men multiply sin, mm -hmm. and the third will bring wrath. Mm -hmm. A hot mind is as a burning fire. Mm -hmm. It will never be quenched till it, is, till it be consumed. So if you're not controlling your temper... My brother saying and some sisters too, you know what I'm saying? They they able to they convince themselves that their anger is righteous, right? So part of you getting that leaven out, even the breadcrumbs and the tosa, you looking at how it is that you deal with certain things. If you are easily upset, that could be going into the leaven that might be in your system. If you easily put off, I'm going to stay home. I'm mad at everybody. I'm going to stay home. You don't know how often I get that call. <laughs> I get that call at least twice a week. It's the Sabbath day. I'm mad. I'm not coming. Tell me I get it at least twice a week. I got, I got it today. I got it today. I'm telling you. Keep going. A fornicator in the body of his flesh mm. will never cease till he have kindled a fire. That happens too, right? I get that call too, right? I just I just clicked on www. You know what I'm saying? Now I think I'm gonna stay home. You know what I'm saying? I don't wanna bring that sin around. You gotta start purging that thing out, man. You gotta work at getting that out. These things read it from the top. 
Two sorts of men multiply sin. These types of men, or sisters, multiply sin. These are those, those breadcrumbs that might be in that toaster. That anger, that fornication spirit that you have. Keep going. And the third will bring wrath. A hot mind is as a burning fire. It will never be quenched till it be consumed. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till he hath kindled a fire. Mm -hmm. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Mm -hmm. He will not leave off till he die. So, my brothers, my sisters, right? Everybody that look good ain't good. Part of that sin might be you have to change your mindset and set higher standards for yourself. I'm saying that specifically to you single people. Set a higher standard for yourself, man. Just because they come into the body this week don't mean I should be like, oh, I, is this my wife? Is this my husband? Set higher standards for yourself. What was I saying last week? IUIC is a lot bigger than just San Diego. So you need to be patient when it comes to that. You know, we, a lot of us, we come out of the world, we had that lustful spirit on us. Man. That's the stuff, that's the stuff that we really got to purge ourselves of, of. You know, we need to build ourselves up first. Mm -hmm. And then wait for whoever else that is, that may be, to build themselves up. Yeah. Don't start jumping the gun with your emotions, with your, with your, with that fever. I'm trying to be polite here with that fever. What is say? What is it's Corinthians? What is say? Uh, is it to burn it? Yeah, that burn it. <laughs> right. You better, you, boy, you better douse that fire with these scriptures. Mm. You know, be patient. That sin. That's what I'm saying. That sin could be like we just looked at. It could be you got a uh, hot temper. You know what I'm saying? And then it could be you just got low standards, like you never really understood how to set a real standard for what a woman should be or how to what a husband should be. Go ahead. He will not leave off till he die. Mm -hmm. A man that breaketh wedlock, saying thus in his heart, Who seeth me? I am compassed about with darkness. The walls cover me, and nobody seeth me. What need I to fear? The most high will not remember my sins. So this guy, whoever this brother is, is, is he think that he can hide his sin. His 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 uh, bread and his crumbs and his toaster, he good. You know what I'm saying? Lord ain't gonna see that. I know I said this before. I definitely taught this class before. Shout out to Officer Gallery out in Washington. You definitely want to control your thoughts. You want to think about the things that you're thinking about. If that makes sense. Right? You want to really captivate your thoughts and not just let your mind wander all over the place. That could also be going into getting the breadcrumbs out of your toaster, finding that secret sin, learning how to really captivate your thoughts. Jump to uh, Proverbs chapter 21. Hold on, look there. Oh. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Read that. Uh Sirach 23 and 19 again because I, I don't think we really realize when we're doing things that we're being watched you could be all alone been single all your life on bigbooty.com they can in the dark in the dark in the corner nobody see you. nobody see you. yeah read that Sirach chapter 23 and verse 19 such a man only fear the eyes of men and know it not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun. Beholding wait. Who can look at the sun? Can you sit there and stare at the sun? What does the sun do? The sun enlightens the whole planet, right? We're talking about one sun. The scripture says ten thousand times. So that goes beyond just your action of www.booty.com or whatever. It's talking about you thinking about punching that up. Alright, go ahead. 
呃，那我放手后嘛。哇，我是呃 ，ten t h i r t e 十八 ，chapter ten and verse thirteen. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. Shall pour out abomination, right? So going back to like the the analogy with the、uh, leavened bread, right? It's like you got leavened bread.、Uh, you just throw a little bit of leaven in, in what you're baking in your cake, right? And nobody can tell, but once it starts to rise around your dough, you're making some bread. But once it, but Point is, it, it by the time it starts to rise and everybody can see it, guess what? There's already a bunch of iniquity behind it. That's why it says he shall pour out abomination. Right? By the time it gets to the body and brothers can see it, the brother's been doing it for a while. Brother and sister,、mm-hmm. and it's probably getting to the it's getting to the point where the most has to look.、Mm-hmm. This has got to be dealt with. So it's not like a, oh, it just happened. No, it's been building up. To the point now, everybody can see it because you're not doing anything about it. Give me a、uh, Psalm chapter ninety four. Psalms chapter ninety four, verse ninety four. Psalms chapter ninety four and verse eight. Uh huh. Understand, ye brutish among the people, and ye fools. When will ye be wise? When will you be wise? Go ahead. He that planted the ear. He that created the ear. The Lord created the ear. He formed us in the belly. He created the ear. Go ahead. Shall he not hear? You don't think he can hear what y'all talking about? If y'all talking in secret, he created the ear. Go ahead. He that formed the eye. He、Shall、made the eye. He created the eyeball with the pupil and all of that. Go ahead. Shall he not see? You don't think he see your secret sin? He created these things. He can see. He can hear. Keep going. He that chastises the heathen, shall not he correct? He that teacheth man knowledge, shall not he know? That's good. Go ahead. What you have is. By the time, with the、um, so the sin is building up, but by the time other other brothers and sisters in the body start correcting it. There's already been this a bunch of silly. It's been going on for a while. Right, right, right. It's got to the point where everybody can see it on that. Let's go to Job fifteen, number sixteen. Job fifteen and sixteen. Yep. Job fifteen, number sixteen. Job chapter fifteen. Because because the thing is, we in this truth, we all gonna fall short. We all gonna get tempted with certain things. Read. Job chapter fifteen and verse sixteen. How much more abominable? It says, "How much more is abominable?" And filthy is man, which drinketh iniquity like water. When when you just don't stop, when repentance is just far out the way. I'm done with repentance. I'm just gonna go straight up into my sin. That's that's when the danger comes in right there. That's when we have to examine ourselves and make sure we ain't too far in, in, into into something where you, there ain't no turning back. Just like you, I just like that scripture goes hand in hand with the last one because it's talking about drinking water, right? The other one's pouring out. It's like you you're pouring a cup of water, and that water sin, right? Now the water's starting to overflow. So now brothers and sisters, are, hey man, you're spilling water all over the place. Clean it up. Go back to、uh, Sirach twenty-three, verse twenty-three, and verse nineteen. Sirach chapter twenty-three and verse nineteen.、Uh-huh. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. So we gotta understand that these. Part of us getting the leaven out, right? We talked about being a hypocrite. We talked about controlling your anger, fornication, and really controlling your thoughts. Now, we want to really be able to control our thoughts. These are other things that might be little small sins that we're not able to really see yet. 
But you got to continue to examine yourself and be able to try to really purge out these smaller things. When I say smaller things, I'm saying in reference to, okay, you didn't know you was Israelite. These are bigger things, right? You didn't know you was Israelite. You didn't know you're supposed to be keeping the Sabbath day. You didn't know you're supposed to be wearing fringes. You didn't know you weren't supposed to be eating pork, right? Those are those are like that's clear. You know what I'm saying? But as you continue to grow and examine yourself, you should be looking for other ways or other levels of improvement. Go to Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 2. We should be looking for the next level of improvement. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, mm -hmm. but the Lord pondereth the hearts. So, in your own eyes, you might think that what you're doing and how you've been doing things your whole life is right, is okay. But you got to be able to look back and say, hey, is what I learned from my mother or from my father, was are these good traits that I continue to uh, have and pass on to my children? You should be pondering that thing. You should be thinking about it. Hey, you know what? My parents, they didn't really teach me the right way in this thing. So I should be, I should try to make a change in that. So controlling and captivating your thoughts and really analyzing the things that you've learned in the past and are those things that you should continue to perpetuate. If they negative behaviors, no. No, sisters. If your if your relationship with your mother was jacked up, then you got a jacked up relationship with your daughter. You got to be able to say, hey, the train got to stop somewhere. Let me stop this thing. Let me figure out what thing that I was taught and how it's affecting this relationship now that I'm having with this child. You can't keep pointing the finger backwards and saying, hey, well, this is what I was taught from the past and there I'm just, I'm just stuck in this pattern of behavior. Nah, you gotta look for levels and ways to improve that thing. I just saw, speaking of Instagram, yeah, I do have Instagram. Yeah. But I, I see, I, uh, the IOIC Instagram, they had a, a post on there that said, break the curse. And basically, that's what we got to do. We're talking about a reset, the Passover being a reset, we need to reset all of our past patterns and break that curse. You want that, Exodus? Yeah, go ahead. Exodus, uh, where's that? I think it's 13. Exodus 13 and verse 4. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. This day came me out in the month of Bib. So what is the month of Bib? Who's got an answer for that? First month of the year. It's the first month of the year? I thought January was the first month of the year. Not according to the Bible. Not according to the Bible. So what happened? Hold that mic. What happened in the month of the year? Why, why, why was that the reset? Because that's the, when we got delivered out of Egypt. Deliverance. We got delivered. So now we have to deliver ourselves mm -hmm. from our sins. Mm -hmm. We got to deliver ourselves from our past patterns. For the things that we were taught that we thought was right but was really against these scriptures when i when i first came into the truth i was thinking that the passover was was the um the first day of the month right but the scriptures clearly tell you what does it tell you 14 days 14 days after the first day let's read it yeah let's go exodus chapter 12 the verse 18 and the first month on the 14th day of the month at even, we shall eat unleavened bread. So this is when it begins. This is when this is when the Passover begins. In the 14th day after the new the real new year. Right. And that's what we were talking about, setting little milestones for yourself. Right. Some people need little milestones in order to 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 try to make change. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 
He is a new creature. Mm -hmm. Old things are passed away. Mm -hmm. Behold, all things are become new. That's what got to happen. If you're truly trying to get that leaven out, those those sins that you that might be inconspicuous to yourself, you got to be trying to become a new person. Right? That's what me and the brothers was talking about earlier. It's just, you know, looking for growth. You know what I'm saying? You should constantly be growing in this truth. You shouldn't be in a pattern where I'm showing up for the Sabbath and like, I'm wearing fringes and, and that's it. Stuck in the same holding pattern, just wearing fringes. You're still moving through your life the exact same way. It shouldn't be that way. It should not be that way. Let's jump over here. Give me a... Go to... Second Ezra, chapter six, verse forty-two. A lot of people know, you know what I'm saying. I, I dig. I do what I do. You know what I'm saying. I'm an electronic technician. I was listening to one class the bishop did a long time ago, and he was talking about how we was taught in history that Benjamin Franklin went out with a kite and a key. And caught electricity and that's you know what I'm saying? I literally thought that. You know what I'm saying? After all the electronic I've been through in my life, not until he said that, that I was like, damn, that don't even make no dang no sense. Read that scripture. Watch this. Second Andrew chapter six and verse forty two. Watch this. Upon the third day. On the third day when the Lord was creating everything, go ahead. Thou didst command that the water should be gathered in the seventh part of the earth. Uh huh. Six parts. Has thou dried up? Stop. How many continents is it? Stand up. Seven continents. Seven continents, right? Read that scripture again, Jadir. Watch this. Listen, listen to what God said. Upon the third day thou didst command that the water should be gathered in the seventh part of the earth. Uh-huh. Six parts has thou dried up. And How many parts did he dry up? So how many continents do the Bible say it is? Six. So, again, this is going back to getting the leaven out, right? It's, it's little things out there, man, historically, that we can learn better. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's little things out there historically that we can really elevate our mind on if we truly are studying to show ourselves approved. So, some of that leaven could be hypocrisy. It could be uh, not really changing your mindset on how you're doing things. It could be fornication. It could be anger. And then it could be really being stuck in the pattern of what the world has taught us. And they taught us a lot of wrong stuff. Give me that. Give me a John 8.32. Watch this. I always like this. Group. This shows you the pattern of behavior that even our forefathers were stuck in. John 8.32. John chapter 8 and verse 32. Mm -hmm. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So Christ is talking to these learned men, to these scribes and Pharisees. He said, you guys going to know the truth, and the truth going to set you free. Now watch what they say next to him. They answered him. They answered him. We be Abraham's seed, uh -huh. and we're never in bondage to any man. Stop. <laughs> Was the Israelites in bondage, yes or no? <laughs> what are they talking about? They said, read it again. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed, uh -huh. and we're never in bondage to any man. In that exact moment in Rome, they was in subjection to Rome. Part of this getting the leaven out of our system is really understanding where we at, even in this captivity. A lot of our people, a lot of us think we ain't in captivity. Like, that's what they thought right here. If we got to put, look. I own my house, you know what I'm saying? But I gotta pay taxes, so do I really own it? <laughs> Not really. You know what I'm saying? That's slavery. That's captivity. As long as you're paying taxes, you're in captivity. You stuck. So we gotta be able to take our mind even to that place. When we're trying to get the leaven out, we wanna even be able to go into the things that we've learned in this world and be able to say, okay, let me compare this to what God say 
is and is not. That's also going into getting some of those secret sins out. Some of that. That's not. I wouldn't say that's a sin. That's just naivety. You know what I'm saying? Just being naive into really where we are. Uh, Romans 12 2. This is what's the most outside of John 3 16. What's the most famous bumper sticker you see on the back of the, the so called Christians? Uh, outside of John 3 16? Yeah, well, you know, there's, 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 there's another one. I seen that one that say now. Maybe having that one. Now? I haven't seen that one. Not, not of this world. That's the one I'm talking about. It's not now. That's what it's what does it say now. What does it say? It has a T in the O. It looks yeah. like a cross or something. Yeah, right? you know, they're going to emphasize it. All right, well, then go ahead. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, that's the same thing. I know okay. you had one bumper stick on there, too. No, I'm just trying to kill it all. It's the original. <laughs> <laughs> residual uh, sticker on there. Go ahead. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, that acceptable and perfect will of God. That's what we're saying. We gotta renew our minds because a lot of us we're still stuck in this world. We think because we have a nice car. We think we have because we have a good job or or a house. Not in captivity. That we're yeah, we're good. Yeah. We are not good. If you think this is good, you keep the commandments and see what good is really gonna be when we get the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because that's what's gonna be good. We're still in bondage, we're still in slavery. You can't just say I'm not gonna pay my property taxes. Nah, you do a bad thing. Even though your house is paid off, mm -hmm. you ain't gonna have no house. Mm -mm. That thing will be gone. It'll be gone. They'll take it from you. All right, go ahead. On oh, me? Yeah. Oh, okay. I know you're gonna change gears. Nah. Okay. Go to <laughs> Wisdom of Solomon, chapter one and verse five. So we're looking at some of those breadcrumbs, some of that that. Uh, hidden sin that we might have. Some unforeseen sin. Some sin we might not even know is there. Some sins that we naive of. Some sins that we might be ignorant of. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh -huh. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. There you go. We got to be able to be disciplined. Part of that leaven that we got to get out as a people is be more disciplined. Man, I don't know how often I call brothers in the morning when I'm on the way to work, and they be like, I'm running late. <laughs> like, why are you not more disciplined? Why are you not up doing what you got to do? Discipline, man. Read that thing again. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit uh -huh. and remove from thoughts that are without understanding mm -hmm. and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. So if you're not able to be disciplined, right, the Holy Spirit or the understanding that you have is not going to stay with you. You got to continue to look for ways to discipline yourself. That's part of getting that leaven out. Is looking for ways that you can discipline yourself. Brothers that ain't got jobs, get up earlier in the morning and go find a job. Stop waking up so late. Wake up at 3 p.m. Right. <laughs> job. Right. <laughs> look for a job. Killing me, bro. Yeah, go ahead. Can you read that scripture again? For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit mm -hmm. and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. So like the officer brought out, he had to have discipline. But also going into, so, you know, it's, it's kind of double. It says, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. So if you're moving in a deceitful spirit, guess what? The Spirit of the Lord is going to move, leave me. With that in mind, if you're rolling in the Spirit of the Most High... You're going to be honest with yourself and try right. to get away from the un unrighteous thoughts. That's the thing. That's the exact thing that's happening is the deceit is within your own self where you convincing yourself that, well, this is how I was brought up. Therefore, I'm just going to continue this pattern of behavior. Like, no, like that's deceit. You're deceiving your own self thinking that you not you should be trying to pull yourself to the fullness of Christ. You should be trying to pull yourself to that level. Not be comfortable with what your mama taught you, what your daddy taught you, or what you learned growing up. You shouldn't be stuck in that pattern. You should be able to look at the scriptures, see what Christ did, and say, well, how can I get to this level? Jump down to verse 15, because I just like 15. Verse 15. For righteousness is immortal. So, what we want to be trying to achieve is immortality. And we're going to achieve that 
by finding all those inconspicuous, hidden, naive sins that we might have lingering around. That's how we're going to achieve immortality. Hmm. So let's let's think about some of the stuff, some of the things that we uh, that we get caught up in. Mm -hmm. The scripture I read in uh, Romans 12, it said, be not conformed to this world. So what does the world teach us? And how do we get this information? A lot of it comes from social media, the things that we see and hear on the news. But the majority of it is from the TV programming that we watch on a daily basis that contaminate and give us a false perception of what we should be living. Go to Matthew uh, 6 and 22. I'm read 22 and 23. Because you think about the, I, we talked about this a while back. Yep. Watch what you watch. Because you will think that's reality. The stuff that we see on social media, you'll think that's reality. A lot of our kids, our youth, watch this stuff on, on uh, Facebook, and people just post whatever they want to put up there, giving them a false reality of life. And the people that are really not really caught up in that, they see that, and they'll think they're really missing out on something. You know, I'm not really doing what well, most of them are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, but they're, according, even according to the world, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing to be successful in life. They think that's what success is. Some of the TV shows, the, um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Why you <laughs> throw me under the give, bus? Give me some TV shows. I don't know, man. Come I don't on. Well, give me some I TV shows you've heard in. of. You've uh, heard of. There's another one. I hate it. There's another one. All right, sisters. <laughs> <laughs> you got all the housewives and loving hip and hop. Exactly. You got the one with the pastors of Atlanta or whatever they call pastors. it. Pastors. Real pastors? It's like, yeah. And they, and they, man, that's ridiculous. Give me this ridiculous. It's Matthew chapter 6 and verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. So the light of the body is the eye. Why is that? Go ahead. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. So if your eye is focused on what you should be focusing it on, what does it say? Thy whole body shall be full of light. So your whole body will be full of light. Go ahead. But, but if thine eye be evil, that whole body shall be full of darkness. So that's what we're looking when we're, when we're watching these scandals and and and, and <laughs> empire, empire. That's the other one. I knew there was another big one out there. Because all the, what do we see on those shows? You see adultery. You see fornication. You see homosexuality. All the things that, we, that Romans 12 is saying, be not conformed to this world. That's We're watching all that stuff and it's, it's stuck in our, in our heads and it's really hard to shake that thing. So that's a goal that we should all be setting for ourselves to separate ourselves from that. Lean yourself off that stuff. Yeah, get off of that. Let me, let me, let me tell you something. Stay, stay in your point, but let me, don't lose it. Go to Leviticus 11. Because like we said, and what is it, Job 11 and 6, a lot of this stuff is double meaning, right? Give me Leviticus 11, and let's look at verse, let's look at verse 7. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. Uh -huh. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. He is unclean to you. Why did the Lord say that these foods are unclean to us? We should not consume these foods. Why did he say that? Anybody know? He said that it's unthinkable because of the pig doesn't uh it doesn't uh, have like multiple stomachs, it doesn't uh what is it uh, regurgitate the food. Okay, okay, that's true. I mean I'm with you. But it Job eleven and six who said these things have double meaning, right? I'm gonna say this, right? If you got like uh, uh, a Maserati, a Lamborghini, right? And then you take that Lamborghini and you pull up the Chevron and you about to get gas for it. Are you going to hit the 87 button or are you going to hit the 91? 
91. You gonna hit the 91 for the Lambo? So what? So what are you then? The Lord said that we above all people on the planet, right? So when it look at these foods, this is bad fuel for our system. You know what I'm saying? Hence the reason we got high hypertension, high blood pressure, all these things, right? This is not good fuel for you because you a Maserati. You a Lamborghini. That's who you are as being an Israelite. So the same thing comes into play when it comes to watching these TV shows. That's fuel. That's bad fuel. That's 87 that you're putting in you. And then you can't understand why, why you and the wife is arguing. She done put that bad fuel in her system. Now y'all, you know what I'm saying? Now it's all off. You gotta put the right kind of fuel into your system. Go ahead. No, that's, that's our point. Go to Matthew 5 and 27. Because we gotta think, some of us say, you know, that stuff don't really affect me. You know, it's just, it's entertainment. It's entertainment. It's not gonna affect me. Got <laughs> Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So a lot of times when we're looking at this, I'm not just talking about the brothers because that's twofold. A lot of times the sisters will look at these brothers on these things with their 22 packs and everything else <laughs> going on. And lustful thoughts start kicking in. You know, you start seeing... Uh, uh, the success, all the money that these people come, they go to strip clubs and they just throwing it out there like it's water. I'm like, man, I want some money like that too. Right. It's like, no. Read that again. Uh, verse 27. Yes. We have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. In his heart. Because you're already starting to think that way. And when you start, when you're watching that stuff, and then now you come home, or your husband comes home, or your wife comes home, and she ain't looking like so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so on this show, or she's not doing the things that so-and-so, or he's not doing the things that so-and-so's doing, now you have anger in your heart towards your own husband or your own wife. So that's the things that we need to purge ourselves from. Wean yourself off of that stuff. There's a lot of TV programming out there that we can be watching that can be edified. It's not a lot. I don't say so. Well, there's, there's some. some. You know, I, like <laughs> I, me. I like car stuff, so I watch all the car shows. Uh, so less than at the car. Uh, so. Well, you know, I <laughs> look upon a car and lust after her. Yeah. You had something after that? No, we good. Let's go, to, uh, go back to Luke chapter 12. Oh. Real quick. Go to Job 31 1, so I can just finish that point. Because a lot of times we have, to, like we said, weaning yourselves off. This is what Job had to do. Job chapter 31 and verse 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? So you got to make a covenant with your eyes. You got to make a covenant with your thoughts. So that you don't fall into these traps that the world set up for us. To keep us asleep. Mm -hmm. Alright. Go back to uh, Luke chapter 12. Go ahead, start it. We're going to go one and three. Luke chapter 12 and verse 1. Uh -huh. In the meantime, when their were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, and so much that they trolled one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Whatsoever you have spoken in darkness. There you go. Whatsoever you have spoken in darkness, brothers and sisters. Whatsoever things you speak in the darkness. Go ahead. Shall be heard in the light. Mm. And that which you have spoken in the ear and closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Jump to wisdom of Solomon chapter one. Solomon chapter one and verse eight. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid. If you speak in unrighteous things, like it just said in Luke, it's going to be shouted from the housetops. Go ahead. Neither shall vengeance, when it punisheth, pass by him. Ven vengeance, when the, when Christ come back, that's not going. He not going to let that slide. That murmuring and backbite, he not going to let it go. 
So part of really getting yourself together, if you got that spirit of, of murmuring and talking about people behind their back, you got to start purging that thing out. You got to get that living out. Brothers and sisters, y'all got to get that out. Keep going. For inquisition shall be made into the councils of the ungodly. He going he gonna to inquisition me. He going to investigate that matter. Go ahead. And the sound of his words shall come unto the Lord. He going to have that thing on record. He going he gonna to pull out the, the uh, what we got, iPhone, you know what I'm saying? Hey, to record. I don't know what Christ going to have. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Go ahead. For the manifestation of his wicked deeds. Mm. Go ahead. For the heir of the jealousy of jealousy heareth all things. Like we just read before in Psalms. He, the one that created the ear, he can hear all things. Go ahead. And the noise of murmurings is not hid. Mm -hmm. Therefore, beware of murmuring. Beware of murmuring. Which is unprofitable. It's going to get you put to death. And refrain, refrain your tongue from backbiting. Uh -huh. For there is no word so secret. That's part, You can't hide that sin. Part of that, like we was going into. Again, part of us getting out those secret sins, right, is really learning how to be able to control our tongue as well. Learning how to control your tongue. Getting all the bread out the toaster. I don't know That's why we come with that. Getting all the crumbs out the toaster. You want to get it all out. So that murmuring. What are we talking about? Watch what you're watching. Uh, think about your thoughts, right? Control your thoughts. Uh, that mind of fornication. Uh, what was the one in Sirach? Uh Concerning not being thirsty, right? Not 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 thinking everybody coming along is this or that. Really learn how to be uh, shamefaced, brothers and sisters. Um, these are different sins that play this. For those of you going to Passover, like I was going to say, uh, Passover is huge. There's going to be a lot of brothers and sisters out there. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're talking about being shamefaced. Man, going out there, man, don't make us look bad. Right. I was saying, I, I, I didn't want to um, put that thought out there when I said San Diego isn't all IUIC. Mm -hmm. It don't mean going out there to Passover and start shopping. That's, that's not what it's all about. Be patient. Be patient. Learn, learn. I'm not talking about Black Wall Street shopping. I'm talking about shopping for your, <laughs> your spouse. Right. But um, be patient. And, and use that that trip to really build up your spirit. Mm -hmm. You know? Get, a lot of inf get information from sisters. Get information from the sisters and the brothers. I encourage you to speak to those out there as well because they had the experience we was talking about last week mm -hmm. they shared experiences with one another because when it's out there when you're out there it's really hard to fall into sin it's what what happens when you come back here mm -hmm. and you're back in the same environment that you're in on a day-to-day -day basis going to work being surrounded by all your co-workers and stuff that pull, yeah when you're comfortable that's where that reset button broke, basically. You don't want to have to keep reset, reset, reset. So use that time to fix yourself so that when you come back to San Diego that you're really built up and you're strong so that you don't fall into those old temptations again. Give me a second out of chapter 15. Uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5, kind of going into what Austin and I was saying. Um, how, start from verse, uh, start from verse, start from verse 1. Sec First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. You know? For yourselves upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Right. So, kind of going to what Austin and I saying, always hitting that restart button. Right. Right now, we know the Lord's coming back as a thief in the night. We have no idea when He's coming back. He can come back tonight. We wouldn't know. So you have to really think about that, because another reason why brothers and sisters are okay with committing that sin is because they don't. 
think about how soon the Lord's coming. Right? And you go to the Passover with your secret sins thinking, oh, I'm good because I went to the Passover. But you still got hatred in your heart. You're still fornicating. You're still coveting. Coveting. Right? All these things. But at the end of the day, you're still going to get put to death. And then you're going to wonder, well, how come the Lord didn't give me time? Now is that time. Now is the time. Just like our forefathers, right? Most High told them, uh, put the blood on the walls. I'm going to come by. Right? He gave them time to prepare. Right now is your time to prepare. Right now you're putting the blood on the doors to the Most High Passover. What if I'm going to talk about that next week? <laughs> That's cool. What's that? Go ahead. Uh, my bad. Uh, read the next verse. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. Oh, wait. Stop. So stop. Going back. Uh, for when they shall say peace and safety. So you're, in your own mind, you're thinking you're good. But it says, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Right? You're going to be destroyed suddenly. Okay, read that. Verse 4. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So you're not in darkness. It's not like you, the Most High has not given you the tools to prepare yourself. The most, it's not like the Most High hasn't given you the light to prepare yourself. So you may have those secret sins, right? Those things you keep in the dark. But guess what? Grab your flashlight. Go down into the basement. And start cleaning it out. We're not in darkness. The Most High gave you that light. He gave you the tools right here. You got brothers and sisters around you. Don't keep your sins in secret. Apply the scriptures. Right? Uh, so there's no reason why when the Christ returns that it should overtake you. It should be surprised. Like, uh-oh. I still got this sin. I said, all these sins I haven't dealt with. Wait. Give me some more time. I'm ready to work on it now. No. It, there's no reason why it should be like that. Read. Ye are all the children of light mm -hmm. and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Right? We're not of the night or the darkness. We're the children of light. We're the sons and we're the uh, sons and daughters of the Most High God. We have the law, statutes, and commandments. Right? We're not like the Egyptians back in, in Egypt where the Most High made their land darkness. Right? No, we're on the side of the light. The Most High gave us light to see. So you have to keep that in mind. Right now is the time to get yourself together and get it fixed. And you gotta be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. now, give me a second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 22. Finish it up. So we talked about the leaven, right? Getting all the leaven out. Even the breadcrumbs and the toaster. Even those things that we might think are inconspicuous not a big deal come on second answer chapter 15 and verse 22 mm -hmm. my right hand shall not spare the sinners mm -hmm. and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth mm -hmm. the fire is gone forth from his wrath and i have consumed the foundations of the earth mm -hmm. and the sinners like the straw that is kindled woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. So, he's saying, woe to them that sin and keep not his commandments. <clears throat> Again, like we talked about, those those big things that we that we learn how to do when we first come into the truth is for us keeping the Sabbath day and putting fringes on our clothes and putting a beard on our face, stop eating those foods. That's just the start. That's just the start. That should not be your finish. Go to uh, the first John 3. 1 John 3, 16, I'm sorry. 1 John, chapter 3, and verse 16. Uh -huh. Hereby perceive we the love of God, mm -hmm. because he laid down his life for us, mm -hmm. and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So we should be trying to come into the fullness of Christ, right? Everything that Christ did, his understanding level, all those things, that should be what we should be striving for. That is our standard. Trying to complete become a, a full temperate person that's the standard that we trying to attain to all right go back to second ezra 15 again second ezra chapter 15 and verse 24 mm -hmm. woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments saith the lord mm -hmm. i will not spare them go your way ye children from the power defile not my sanctuary get all that leaven out get it out defile not his sanctuary He's not just talking about 
getting 11 out of your house, getting 11, getting 11 if you got in school, make sure you get that out too. But he's talking about make sure you get all the sin out of yourself. Continue to look for ways that you can improve and make self-improvement upon yourself. Read that part one more time. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the power. Uh -huh. Defile not my sanctuary. Defile not his sanctuary. Go ahead. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him. Uh -huh. And therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction. He gonna deliver you to death and destruction. If you have a defiled sanctuary, you hold it on to old sins, you hold it on to murmuring, you hold it on to hypocrisy, you still letting these TV shows and things influence you and be your fuel. You got to continue to look for ways to improve. That's what you got to do. That's how you get the leaven out. It's more than just getting the leaven out of your house. Look for self-improvement. Go to Matthew 722. Because a lot of us, you know, we're saying you got to make sure that you're doing this stuff, that you're, that you're, that you're cleaning the house. It's time to clean the house. Because a lot of times we'll think that we're getting away with stuff if we're not. This was like the scary, one of the scariest verses in the whole Bible because you don't want to, don't fool yourself. Okay. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 22. Many will say to me in that day. In that day. Lord, what day is that? It's the day of the Lord when the Lord comes back. Go ahead. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So you got to think about it. Lord, Lord, there are more fringes. Lord, Lord, I, I, I stopped eating pork and I grew up my beard. Lord, I, I, I dressed... Uh, uh, modestly I wrapped my head when I was in prayer but I'm still watching these things I'm still I'm still uh, backbiting still I'm still, got an anger spirit. I still got a spirit of anger still got a spirit. exactly those are the things I'm saying don't don't fool yourselves with these little but, but they're not little sins they're, they're sins sin is sin so don't fool yourself thinking that these are little sins because you're doing all this other stuff because in that day, a lot of people are going to be surprised when that blade come down. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org